Welcome to What is Polymorphism? In this lecture, we take a look at a couple of things. First of all, we understand exactly what polymorphism is. Then we look at two examples of polymorphism, method overloading and method overriding. So let's start off by understanding exactly what polymorphism is. Now, in order to understand exactly what polymorphism is, we have to break polymorphism into different parts. So first, let's look at the poly part. And poly means many. And morphism means behaviors. So combined polymorphism means many behaviors. Polymorphism is an object-oriented programming concept. And in essence, what it means is, is it is it's something like a method or anything like that to have many behaviors even though there's only one method. So as we look at examples of polymorphism, you'll understand better exactly what it is. So let's just take a look at a quick example. So let's say that we have two classes, the rectangle class and the shape class. The shape class is the super class and the rectangle class is the subclass. Now we have rectangle extends shape, so that establishes the inheritance relationship. Now let's say both, both, um, both classes have the calc area method. So both the shape class has its calc area method and the rectangle class has its own calc area method. So now when we when we create an object of this rectangle class, we have rect object, which is an object of the rectangle class, and we want to execute the calc area method. The real question comes up is which method is executed? Is the shape is the shape um, is the calc area method in the shape class executed, or is the calc area method in the rectangle class executed? And this is exactly where polymorphism plays in because there's there's one method, but it has multiple behaviors. So there's one method calc area but it has two different behaviors one behavior is based on whatever is in the rectangle class and the other behavior is based on whatever is in the shape class so now let's look at method overloading which is our first example of exactly of, of poly the concept of polymorphism and um, this is um, this is method overloading is also known as static binding and method overloading is something that we've looked at earlier in this course But basically what it is is method overloading is based on method signatures You will understand exactly what a method signature is just a few lines down so <clears throat> let's say that we're in the rectangle class and We have we have two constructors for this rectangle class the first constructor is public rectangle with no parameters the second constructor is public rectangle with two parameters, int l and int w. Now, both of these constructors are in the same rectangle class. So if you see, both of them have the exact same name, rectangle, because they're both constructors. Now, the only difference between the two is that one constructor takes in no parameters and the other constructor takes in two parameters. So when we're creating an object of this rectangle class, we could either say rectangle and then no param or no arguments or we could say rectangle 3 comma 4 now both of these both of these um both of these statements work and now the real question is how does the computer find out which method to run because we have two rectangle constructors so how does the computer know which rectangle constructor to run so in the first example when it's rectangle with no parameters the computer searches the rectangle class to find a constructor with no parameters when it finds it it runs it now in the second example where it's rectangle 3 comma 4 the computer goes to the rectangle class and searches the computer goes to the rectangle class and searches for a constructor rectangle with two parameters that are integers when it finds these two in, um, when it finds this constructor it runs that constructor so that's how method overloading works and method overloading is based on method signatures so as we know that there's two rectangle constructors and both have the same name the computer is able to differentiate them based on their method signatures. So the method signature is the public rectangle and then the parameters. So that's exactly what the method signature is, kind of like the method header. And that's all that's that's what um, enables the computer to differentiate between different um, different different methods. And that's why you can have methods with the same name, but as long as they have a different number of parameters, they can still both um, be in the same class. Next, let's take a look at method overriding, something else that we've also taken a look at. And method overriding is also known as dynamic binding. Now, basically what happens in method overriding is you replace the superclass method. So now let's say we're in the superclass shape 
and we have a method which is called public int calc area so that's our method in our superclass shape now let's say that we have a subclass rec rec which extends shape so that means it's a subclass now in that in that subclass we also have public int calc area now note that both of these declarations public int calc area both of them have some code which i've not shown but the code is different between the two so now what happens is is this is something known as overriding so as you know in inheritance the subclass automatically inherits or gets the methods and instance variables from the superclass. So if the subclass rectangle did not have public int calc area, it would automatically get that method from the superclass shape. But by redeclaring the method exactly the same, so it's word for word the same, the computer now knows that the rectangle subclass is what we call overriding the superclass, um, the superclass's method. So basically what this means is, as we know, to calculate the area for a shape, it requires a different formula than does to calculate the area of a rectangle. And that's why we have to override the existing method in the superclass in order to make it appropriate for our subclass rec. So if let's say we have an object of, a, of the rec class, which is rec object dot, and then we want to run the uh, calc area method. So if we go rec object dot calc area method, then it will execute the method it will, um, the computer will execute the method in the subclass. So it'll, uh, it'll execute public int calc area in the subclass rec method. Versus if we have, let's say, an object of the shape class or the superclass. If we have an object of the shape um, superclass, we have shape obj dot calc area. Then it will execute the method in the superclass. Um, the calc area method in the superclass shape. So that's the difference. Again, we have two different we have one method, but they have two different behaviors. And it's just based basically what's happened is that the subclass has replaced the existing code in the superclass and given its own code. So then whenever the calc area method is run with a rectangle object, the subclass's method will automatically be run. So I understand this sounds a little bit complicated outside of a coding environment. So now we're going to move to Dr. Java where we're going to take a look at an example that we've already looked at. So we've already looked at the bicycle and mounted bike classes. So now we're going to see how polymorphism applies there and how we've seen polymorphism in action already. So here we are at Dr. Java and the first file that we have open is <clears throat> bicycle.java. So in this bicycle.java class, we have a lot of things. We have some instance variables over here. Now we've already looked at we've already looked at the getter and setter methods and things like that. So now what we're going to be doing looking at is that these two constructors. And these two constructors show us a example of poly polymorphism known as method overloading. So what we have is we have public bicycle and we have public bicycle. So now both of these are constructors. Both of these are constructors. Now the difference is that this takes in two parameters, int start gear and int start speed, while this takes in zero parameters. So, <clears throat> so now if we want to understand exactly what the difference is, we see that when we have zero parameters, gear and speed are automatically set to zero. But when we get the parameters, we assign gear and speed the value of whatever these parameters turn out to be. So that's the difference. So remember that the method signature between these two is not exactly the same, which is why they can coexist in the same class. Because this has two parameters and this doesn't, so this enables the computer to differentiate the two. Now we also have two, two methods down over here, public void slowdown and public void speed up. And all these do is increase or decrease the speed. So as we can see in public void slowdown, we simply decrease the speed by how much ever is indicated. And in public void speed up, we increase the speed by whatever, um, whatever the parameter comes out to be. So now let's, let's move to mountainbike.java, which is a subclass of, the, of this bicycle class. So let's look at that and see where polymorphism fits in there. So we have public class mountain bike extends bicycle. So this extends keyword tells us inheritance is occurring. And again, over here, we have method overloading because we have a constructor public mountain bike and we have a constructor public mountain bike in start gear, in start speed and in start height. 
So that's how that exactly works. And the, we just looked at that in the bicycle class. So now we understand exactly what method overloading is. Now scroll down here. So as you remember in the bicycle class, we had the get gear, the set gear, the get speed, the set speed method. So all of those methods are already automatically inherited. So there's no need to redo, um, reinsert them. And then we added a new instance variable seed height. So we created the getter and the setter methods for that instance variable. Now we see two more methods in this class, and that's the public void slow down in decrement and public void speed up in decrement increment. So now if we recall from the bicycle class, if we go right back to the bicycle class, we see that we had the exact same methods, exact same methods. And as we know with inheritance, these methods are automatically inherited. So we may be wondering what is the exact reason of the mountain bike um, subclass to re rewrite these methods? Well, this is something known as method overriding because this exact method signature or this exact method declaration is the same thing that we see right over here. So now what happens is what the subclass is doing is it's basically saying I'm overriding this method or what that means is I'm saying I'm replacing the existing method in the bicycle class because I think that the code, whatever the code should be of this method is different for my class. So what it's doing is it's saying set speed to get speed minus decrement divided by two. So what it's doing is when it gets the speed, it'll get the speed. It'll subtract the decrement divided by two and that'll, that'll set the speed to whatever that comes out to be. So as you can see, the only difference between this and the existing code in the bicycle class is that over here, basically what it's doing is it's dividing the value of the decrement by two and then subtracting that from the speed. So as you can see, when we go decrement divided by two, that's the only difference. And the get speed method gives us the speed of the of this um, of the class and then the set speed method allows us to set the speed of the private in private instance variable. So that's exactly how it works and similarly for the speed up method it has the same method declaration as the bicycle class and then what it does over here is it sets the speed to the existing speed plus the increment divided by two. So in both cases when whether you're trying to decrease the speed or increase the speed only half of what you want to happen will actually occur and that's what and the reason we're able to say that specifically for the mountain bike subclass is because we're overriding the existing methods in its superclass and we're telling the computer hey when you're creating an object of our mountain bike and you want to speed up it's only going to speed up by half and that's why we had to redeclare these methods because we wanted to tell the computer that we're overriding them so that's how method overriding works so we've looked at method overriding and method overloading that occur mm, that occur when we are um, using polymorphism so now let's move to the test.java um, program we're basically we're going to be testing out and seeing exactly how polymorphism works when it's in action we have everything set up now let's see how it works so here we are in public class test and here in this test um, test class we're going to be testing out the mountain bike and the bicycle classes so we have the class declaration, the main method declaration, and here we go. So we have mountain bike B equals new mountain bike 2 comma 10 comma 3. So as we know, we're creating a mountain bike object named B. We're using the new keyword and we're using, we know it's mountain bike because we've used this um, term right over here, mountain bike. Now notice there are three parameters, 2 comma 10 comma 3. So now when the computer sees this mountain bike constructor, the com what the computer does is it automatically goes to the mountain bike class and it looks for mountain bike constructors. Now it finds two constructors, mountain public mountain bike and public mountain bike with three parameters. Now the computer remembers that when this, this a mountain bike object was being created, it had three different parameters. So then the computer knows that not to use this constructor, but to use this constructor instead. And by using this constructor, the computer knows that it has to execute this code and not this code because the three parameters tell the computer to use this constructor over this constructor. So the parameters were something like two, 10 and three. So what we had over here is the gear, the gear instance variable will be set to two, the speed instance variable will be set to 10, and the start height will be set to three. Now, let's look at the next line. Mountain bike M equals new mountain bike. 
Now we're creating a mountain bike object named M and notice how it has no parameters this time. And because it has no parameters this time, the computer goes back to the mountain bike class and looks at the two different constructors. Now it sees that one constructor has three parameters and one constructor has zero parameters. Now because the constructor used in this test.java program has no constructors, it's going to execute this constructor instead of this constructor. So as you can see, the number of pr arguments given when using these constructors let the computer know exactly which constructor to use. And this is an example of polymorphism because we've used method overloading because we're calling the same method but we're having a different number of parameters that enable us to give it a different behavior. Now we're also going to be doing our last declaration which is bicycle s equals new bicycle 2 comma 10. So again this is creating a bicycle object not a mountain bike object but a bicycle object and we're saying it's um, its parameters are 2 comma 10. So over here the computer goes and looks at the constructors of the bicycle class. It sees two constructors. Now this constructor has zero parameters and this constructor has two parameters. Now because we had two parameters it gives us um, because uh, our declaration at two parameters it was going to use this constructor and the gear instance variable will be set to 2 and the speed will be set to 10. So here we are back and we're going to say system.out.println b.getSpeed. So what this is doing is this is the b remember b is the bicycle on um, the mountain bike object and we're going to get its speed. So we already know that when we declared this we set its speed to 10. So then when what this should print out is exactly 10. So as you can see what happens is the computer says okay so we're going to the B object and that's a mountain bike so they go to the mountain bike class and they look for the get speed method. So when they when now if you go to the mountain bike class you can see that the get speed method is actually not present. There's no get speed method. But that's not a problem because the mountain bike is a subclass of the bicycle class. So then what the computer does is after it doesn't find it here, it goes to the bicycle class and looks for a get speed method. So it goes over here and it finds its get speed method. And it can see that the get speed method returns an integer which represents the speed. And as we know, the speed of this B object is 10. So this returns 10. Next, the system uh, goes to the s uh, system uh, out dot println s dot get speed. Now remember, s is a bicycle object, and we want to run the get speed method. So in this case, the computer straight goes to the bicycle class. Now notice how it did not go to the mountain bike class because this is a bicycle object, not a mountain bike object. So it goes straight to the bicycle class and it looks for the get speed method, which it finds, and it finds that it returns an integer, which is the speed. So again, as we know when we declared the um, s object, we know that we set the speed to 10. So then this returns to be 10. Now what happens is we say b dot speed up by 10. Now if you remember, b is our mountain bike object and it currently has a speed of 10. So we know that b currently has a value of 10, the speed has a value of 10, and we want to speed it up by 10. So what the computer does is it acknowledges we have a parameter um, of the integer 10 and then it goes to the mountain bike class because B is a mountain bike object it goes to the mountain bike class and looks for the speed up method so here it is at the mountain bike class it looks for the speed up method which it finds right over here now what it does is it goes public void speed up int increment so this is actually 10 when we're running it so B dot speed up 10 and it basically increases the speed by 10 divided by 2. So it increases the speed by 5. So when it, when it increases the speed by 5, 10 plus 5 is equal to 15. So now the new value of the speed of this mountain bike object is now 15. Now remember, if, let's say that if this method did not exist, let's say this method did not exist in the mountain bike class, and the computer came here looking for the speed up method and it wasn't able to find it. Then what the computer would do is, it would go to the bicycle class and look for a speed up method, which it would find right over here. And in this case, it would increase the speed by 10. So that's exactly how it would work. Now this is an example of method overriding, because by overriding or replacing the existing method in the superclass, the constructor ran the method in the subclass because that's what it found first. And that's how method overriding works. So as you can see, the computer goes to the subclass first, and if it finds the method there, it won't go anywhere else. But if it doesn't, it goes to the superclass. 
So it found it here and it ran this code instead of running the speed up method in bicycle.java, which was actually some different, um, had some different results. So then the value of the speed now becomes 15. And over here we have s.speedup, which we want to increase the speed by 10 again. Now remember s is a bicycle object, so we're going to go straight to the bicycle class. Now here we are in the bicycle class and we found the method speed up. The computers found the method speed up. So now what it's going to do is it's going to increase the speed by whatever we've said. We've said increase the speed by 10. And the existing speed is already 10. So 10 plus 10 is equal to 20. So that's the new value of this um, of the speed of this s um, s bicycle object. So now when we say system dot out dot println b dot get speed. So we want to get the speed of this this um, object. We know that the speed is 15 because even though we wanted to speed it up by 10 according to the overridden um, method in the in the mountain bike class the speed only increases by half of what you tell it to so now the speed is 15 and then over here when you want to print out the speed of s which is the bicycle object the speed is 20 because in the bicycle class the speed increases by however much you want it to so now let's just quickly compile and make sure that the results are fine so we compile and we run and as you can see over here, 10, 10, 15, and 20 are printed out right over here. So everything worked as planned. And a couple things we looked at. We looked at method overloading because we had multiple constructors. And the computer was able to figure out which constructor to use based on the number of parameters. And then we also took a look at method overriding because we saw that in the mountain bike subclass, we overrode the existing speed up method in the bike bicycle superclass. And based on that, the computer ran the overridden method when we asked it to. So that's how method overriding works. And method overriding and overloading are two examples of polymorphism when one method has multiple behaviors depending on the situation.